All right, man. Appreciate it. Uh, Coach G, appreciate you, you know, having me on, bringing me as a part of this stuff, man, over the past couple of weeks. So I really appreciate that. Give me an opportunity to meet some guys um, and talk a little bit about what I do, what I teach, what I believe in. Um, but for those that I haven't spoke to before, we haven't met before, I'm Coach Chapman, Earl Chapman. I'm the defensive coordinator over at uh, Cameron High School, Camden, South Carolina. Um, we're at 3A school down here in South Carolina, um, about 30 minutes away from Columbia. Um, so we're not too far away. Um, my contact information, just in case any questions or anything comes up um, after we go through this presentation, after I talk about what we do defensively, um, got my cell number there. Uh, my email is just my first name, dot last name uh, at kcsdschools.net. Um, and then obviously my Twitter, which I'm sure most of you have seen uh, from seeing it on uh, Coach G's Twitter. A um, little bit about myself, my background. I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, so being down here in the South, you know, I'm not from here. It was a, a change for me. It was different uh, moving down here to be a high school coach. Um, I attended Dunbar High School, um, played football, basketball, baseball there, and then went on to play my college ball at Bridgewater College. Uh, in Virginia, uh, not too far from James Madison University. Um, just my, my coaching experience. Um, started out, did a season down at uh, Bartram Trail High School, um, right outside of Jacksonville, Florida. Coached the defensive backs there. Um, then went up to Wilkes University uh, and worked under a guy named Frank Sheptop, who's now the head coach at uh, Bloomsburg University, a Division II school up in Pennsylvania. Coached the defensive backs there. Um, I think that's important for me to mention because uh, working for Coach Sheptop is, is where I really um, got my foundation in coaching. I learned a lot from him, a lot of what I teach, a lot of what uh, the way I go about my business comes from what I learned from him. Um, and then moved on to Lightcoming College, which is also in Pennsylvania, uh, coached the defensive backs there, and then eventually moved on to Methodist University where I was the recruiting coordinator. Um, coordinated the punt and, you know, punt return team, punt block team, um, and coached the corners. Um, and then recently, uh, three years ago in 2017, came on down to Camden uh, to be his uh, defensive coordinator, also one of our strength coaches, um, and also worked with the track and field program as well, working with sprinters. Um, just a little bit about us defensively and kind of where we've been, a little background on, on the things that we've done since we've been here. I'm coming, to, coming in with the new head coach, Coach Rim. Um, the season before we got here in 2016, um, Camden was five and six. Um, we gave up 39 points per game. Um, lost in the first round of the, the state playoffs that year. 2017 was our first season. We come in, we changed the defense, uh, moved some guys around in new positions. Um, went three and eight that, that year. Um, gave up 30 points per game, which obviously is way too much. Um, and then we ended up losing in the first round of the playoffs that year. Got better towards the end of the season. Just a lot of adjustments um, with, with the first year with the new defense. 2018, had a lot of returners from that 2017 defense. Um, went eight and four. We actually started 10 seniors on defense that year. So I was pretty fortunate. Uh, gave up, got it down to 16 points per game. Ended up losing in the second round uh, to Chapman. Um, played some really close games that year. Lost to the eventual state champions in Chester High School by two points in overtime. Um, and then last, this past season, 2019, um, we went 12-2. and two. Uh, We had to break in a lot of new players defensively. Gave up 21 points per game with playing, you know, uh, 10 seniors the year before. We had a lot of first-time varsity starters. Um, we ended up winning our region championship. Uh, and then we played uh, in, our, in our state semifinal game. Um, against Chapman High School, who eventually went on to win um, the state championship. Okay, a couple things I wanted to get into before I actually get into the X's and O's, um, just so you have a little background on um, who we are and where we come from. And can everybody see this okay? I don't know how it shows up on everybody else's screens. Yeah, you're good, Coach. Okay, cool. Um, but one thing, you know, we, we talk about our defensive philosophy, and this is just our general defensive philosophy. 
Um, won't read everything to you. If you want to get this, obviously contact me and I'll get this out to you. Um, but first thing, we will have no tourists on defense. And that just simply means nobody's along for a free ride. You're not going to play if you do not contribute. Okay, um, we want our guys to be ambitious, have goals, um, and things that they're trying to pursue as a part of our defense. Uh, we're going to be physical and mental discipline. All right, that precedes everything that we do. All right, be on time, play aggressively within our scheme, all right, and exhibit great character in our social life, especially with social media. We all know the challenges that come along with that. Um, conditioning precede, precedes mental toughness, okay? It gives us a chance to play hard for four quarters, all right? We will not sacrifice speed and conditioning. This is per permanent in our thinking, all right? We feel like if we're in a great physical shape, all right, that allows us to be more mentally focused and more mentally tough, all right? Have simplicity built into our packages. All right, we're working with high school kids. We don't get a lot of time with them. Um, they have a lot of other things going on in their lives. So we want our, our packages to be simple. All right, gives us a chance to play fast. However, we will still challenge them to learn scheme. Okay, we can't handcuff ourselves, not be able to be successful on Friday night because we're so limited in our scheme. Intensity with integrity in everything we do. All right, dominate the opponents from whistle to whistle. So we want to play hard and we want to play hard and do it the right way. Okay, a major teaching point that we live by. 66% of our success, we feel like happens pre-snap. Okay, that comes from knowing and understanding the call. All right, I, one of my big pet peeves is a guy to tell me they did not get the call. All right, that is your responsibility. We signal it. We have three guys signaling on the sideline. There is no excuse to not get the call. Make sure you understand the call once you get it. Recognize your formation, okay? And this is to help us align properly. Those are the things that we feel like if we do those things before the snap, we have a chance to be extremely successful on that play, all right? The, the last part of that is obviously once the ball snap, executing our assignment and tackling the football, okay? Number six, we got to stop the run. That's one thing that we're built upon. Um, you'll see that as I get into the X's and O's. We believe that we use all 11 guys to defend the run game. Um, and I know that sounds crazy, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, develop the structure to stop the run and stick with it. This gives the players an opportunity to play fast. Involve all 11, 11 defenders and have overhangs. All right, have overhangs and develop trust in your front so that everyone know where, know where their help is. Okay, in the passing game, we want to make them earn it. Okay, we are a press quarters team, um, so we believe in no free access. All right, so we're going to make them earn everything in the passing game. We're not going to give up a bunch of five yard hitches and slants. All right, we want to be aggressive. We feel like this allows us to focus on the technique and the fundamentals. All right, I'm going to be asking my guys to do the same thing about 60 or 70 percent of the game. And we feel like if we can perfect that technique, all right, we can be successful on those plays. All right, we will be a package team. All right, we do mix in some packages. Uh, we feel like this uh, allows us to get more players involved. All right, allows us to involve, involve more guys in the young game. Maybe you have a young guy that can't handle the whole system right now. Um, but he's, he's a great pass rusher on third down, right? So we try to develop packages to utilize all the players that we have. We're, we're, we're lucky here. You know, we have about 50 guys on varsity. Um, so we really don't have a lot of guys going both ways. Um, so we're able to utilize that to help us be successful. Um, number nine, get off the field on third down. We feel like um, obviously that's important. All defensive coaches know that. Um, we utilize – a multitude of packages, okay? We use our four down stuff, our three down stuff, all right? We just wanna have several options throughout the course of the game to keep that offense off balance. Play great red zone defense, <clears throat> all right? If they get down there, our goal is to hold them to three. Have the ability to disguise if we need, all right? And then solid fundamentals at the end of the day, it's about getting off of blocks, block destruction, tackling, our get off up front on the line of scrimmage, changing the line of scrimmage, and then our pursuit to the football. Those are the things that we're truly, truly, truly going to focus on, all right? And we want to get our best 11 on the field, okay? And these are the things that I talk to my coaches about, all right? My defensive coaches, we're lucky to have seven guys on the defensive side of the ball. We want to get our best 11 on the field. Coach positive, all right? You can coach your players to be better than they think they are. 
all right? Give them some confidence as players. Keep it simple. <clears throat> it's not what we know as coaches, but what our players know, all right? Get them lined up and set prior to the snap. Stress the individual techniques, okay? Take a personal approach. I think this is extremely important. Before they care to listen, they listen to see if you care. We've all heard that before, but it's something I truly believe in. Have flexibility in our situational defenses, okay? All right. Coaching, I feel like it's successful when you get your players to do what you want them to do on game day, okay? If they're doing it in practice, that's fine. But if the lights come on on Friday night and things go out the window and we haven't done our job as coaches, okay? You get what you demand from your players, and then lastly, feature your playmakers, all right? We had a defensive end this past year who had 19 sacks for us this season. He was a guy that we tried to get in, in great matchups and, and pass wrestling situations based on protection, all right? Find out who your playmakers are and find ways to let them make plays, okay? And then our defensive must, we must communicate. We must stop the run. We must get off the ball. Coverage, four seconds of great concentration. That's what we talk to our secondary and, and linebackers about. Run to the ball, get into our pursuit, and then tackling and turnovers. Turnovers, we all know we want to be plus at the end of the game and turnovers. And then for our defensive teaching progression, this is how we teach everything. We start on the board in the classroom. Um, we'll watch some film as well. Uh, Walkthroughs, individual drills where we focus on alignment, stance, what are your keys? Where should your eyes be? And then your responsibility based on run pass reads. Okay. And then our group drills, our seven on seven, inside run. We do some half field pass stuff and then all of the team stuff that we do. Okay. So that's kind of where we are. That's like the basis of, of what we're trying to preach. Um, the, the, the page that I want all of us to be on as defensive coaches. Um, I think that's extremely, extremely important for us. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and get into uh, just drawing some stuff up. If, if, if guys have any questions or anything, again, uh, reach out to G, let him know, and I'll come in and, and try to address those questions as we go through, okay? Um, I might give me a little chance to work with this here. This is new to me drawing on this screen. Um, so I'm gonna try my best to see if I can get this to work for us. Hey, G, have you drawn on this whiteboard before? Yeah, I have. It's <clears throat> it's not the best if you're just using the mouse, but I mean, it's doable. Um, you can also do shapes on there or whatever, but I mean, worst case, man, if you got if you got your own whiteboard, just, you know what I mean? That's probably best, right? So yeah. Do that. Make sure everybody can see everything. How's that? You're good. All right, cool. All right. So first thing I'm going to talk about a little bit is where we are and how we set our fronts. Right? So when we set our fronts, the number one thing we're looking for first is if there's a tight end in the game. Okay, and I'm only going to talk about two fronts today because it's mostly about match coverage. Um, but I just need that to so you all can see how we fit in the run game as well. All right. So I'm going to start with a 21 personnel formation, uh, just a base pro set. I, mean, I know we don't see a ton of this anymore, uh, but again, this is the foundation for, for where we are. All right, now, different than most four down teams, okay, 
we actually play with a non-technique end. Okay, we actually play with a non-technique end. Now I have the ability to move him around and do different things based on some different calls. Um, but uh, initially we set everything with a non-technique end. So if we have a tight end in the game, all right, our Mike linebacker is going to set the front to where that tight end is. So right here with this formation, he'd be saying a right, right call. Okay, and what that right, right call tells us is where we are setting our three technique. Okay, where we are setting our three technique. So with a tight end in the game, our end is actually going to be in the nine. Okay, he's going to be shaded outside on that tight end. We take our three technique, shaded on the guard. Here's our nose shaded on the center, and our weak side, what we call the rush in, he's actually in a five technique on his weak side, okay? And then essentially with our backers, we fill in the bumbles. We're a one-gap, run-fit defense, okay? So my Mike, he's in a strong side 10, okay? My, what we call, and, and most people will call him their nickel or whatever it is, but our, our head coach wanted one of these positions on our team to match our mascot, so we call him the dog linebacker. He sets to the right and left call, all right, and he's in a 40-I. He's outside shade, all right, on that, I'm sorry, he's in a 50. He's outside shade on that, on that uh, tackle over there, okay? And then on the weak side, our Sam, okay, he's the guy that's in a 40-I on the inside shade on this tackle, okay? So what we're doing is we're gapped out versus all runs, okay? Again, we're a one-gap defense. Bam. Our corners, as we get into our secondary, our corners, we align in a press alignment all the time, okay? We are always in a press alignment. Now, we don't actually play an aggressive press technique, but we do simulate that, like I talked about before, no free access. That's something we believe in. Now, based on formations and where the number two receivers are, okay, is where my safeties will align. So now, because this is a right-right call, and all of the receivers, all right, the number of receivers to this side is greater. This is where we're going to set our rip call as well, which declares our passing strength, okay? So my free safety, if his number two is attached to the formation or in the backfield, okay, he's going to take his alignment about one by nine outside of that tight end. Now, same thing for the strong. Where's his number two? His two's in the backfield, so he's going to take his alignment off the end man in the line, one by nine, all right, and set himself there, okay? So that's how we would look versus a pro set. Now, we feel like even though we play too high coverage, we are able to get nine guys in run defense, okay? So... We flow to the football. Our safeties are our force and cutback players in the run game. Okay? So they are reading high hat, low hat. If they get low hats, they're coming downhill, checking their number two as they work downhill. Okay? So now, to get into the coverage aspect of it. Okay, I'm going to just change up some formations. I'm going to get into some 20 personnel stuff here. Okay, again, our base rules. We don't have a tight end in the game now. Okay, so we would still set to the side with the most threats. Okay, so we would actually set this as a right call. Without a tight end, my end is actually going to be in what we call a ghost six. So he would treat it like it's a tight end there as if he was head up on that tight end, okay? The right, right call, again, sets our three. Our nose and our weak side rush will go away, all right? Pass based on receivers, this is also a rip call, okay? So our corners, like I told you, always set themselves in a press alignment, okay? Now, our safeties. They have two rules in alignment. Is my number two attached to the formation or in the backfield? Or is my number two a slot? If my top number two is detached, I take my alignment two by 12 off my number two. Okay? If I'm an outside linebacker 
And my number two is the tax. Our dog linebacker goes to the field. He apexes number two and the end man in the line of scrimmage. Our Mike's rules don't change. He sets in the strong 10. Okay? And now my Sam is still in the 40. Okay? So what happens is on his backside, strong safety, two rules. That's all you have in alignment. So there's no confusion. Is my two in the backfield? Yes, he is. So I take my alignment off, the end man in the line of scrimmage. I'm about one by nine, and that's where I'm set. Okay? So that's how we align to stuff. All right? Now, let's talk about our rules and coverage. Coach, a quick question for you. Uh, Coach wants to know if you're a spill or a box team. We are a spill team. Good. We are a spill team. And that's, that's definitely something that's big for us. Our defensive ends, if we get some type of down block here, he's going to squeeze. He's going to look for something coming back. We're going to spill. We're going to replace. If they try to block with a slot, here comes the safety to fit. All right, so that's why we feel like we're able to get nine guys in the run fit. Okay. Now, when we start talking about coverage, all right, our rules are simple. And again, fellas, we have other coverages that we run, um, but this is just our base, the way we play our quarters. I want to be in this about 60, 60, 70 percent of the time. It allows us to adjust to every formation that we see, and my guys know it, and we've been successful. Okay, so let's start with the corners, all right, because the corners, I always tell my corners, you don't have a lot to think about, all right, but your techniques got to be great. Okay, so for both corners, they are aligned on that number one receiver, and their technique is called mod. Okay, and I know I've heard other guys use the term mod, but for us, mod means man over depth. Okay, that's what mod means for us. It means man over depth. Okay, and what we teach our guys is that depth is five yards. Okay, so we play an inch back or a motor technique. All right, and that, that corner is taught if that, that receiver, that number one receiver is vertical past five, you take him. He's all yours. You have him wherever he goes, okay? If he does anything else, he stops, he runs a hitch, uh, some type of speed out, some type of inside cut. If it happens before that five yards, you make a smash call, all right? And that's just to alert our outside backer, and then we zone out to our corner. Okay, so we're going to either end up playing man coverage or we're going to end up playing our true court. Okay, and that's called Maude. That's all he does in our base coverage. That's all he does. That's all he needs to know. All right, now, our free safeties. All right, our safety, free and strong. They're, again, tied into two. Okay, their technique is the same. It's called Maude. Okay, it's man over depth again. Now, what they have to understand about that is their depth, we tell them, is eight yards. Okay, we tell them their depth is eight yards. But they have to understand if that number two receiver clears that backer, he's got to be prepared to take all of them. All right, because we understand that sometimes off run action, this guy's going to get pulled. All right, depending on fronts and those sort of things, that, that outside backer is going to get pulled. So to cover us on play action and those sort of things, he has to understand if he clears that outside backer, I have him. Okay? Now, the other things that he can get, if he's vertical, he takes him. He's plus eight, it's mod, man over depth. That's my depth, I take him. If my number two does anything else, I rob in that direction. So if my two goes out, I get my eyes outside to one. Okay, and then what next, the next part of that for us is to rob the curl, roll the post. All right, we're going to rob the curl, roll the post if my two is out. Okay, if my two is in, okay, I'm getting my eyes across the field now. All right, I'm alert for something coming back over the middle. All right, if I, if I get my eyes here, if I see no threats, then I'll loosen up and become just a football player and read off my quarterback, okay? So when I talk about the safeties, okay, the safeties are doing the same things on both sides, 
Okay? If two is in, my eyes go in. If two is out, my eyes go out. Look into Rob Curl Roll Post to be able to help this corner. Okay? If my two is vertical, he's mine. Those are the only three things that my safeties need to know to play our base cover. Okay? The only three things. Now, that's happening on both sides. Again, we this is mirrored on both sides. So the corner's the same, the safeties are the same. Now, this safety is obviously taught, okay, my number two is in the backfield, right? So my, the threat of me getting something vertical is, is highly unlikely, all right? And they understand that, okay? So he understands now I'm going to be looking to help, all right? I'm almost become the freed up player if it's a pass, okay? So now I'm going to look to help my corner on post, on dig, all right? Sometimes I had some guys who were good enough. We had a kid for us a year ago who ended up walking on at Carolina, at South Carolina, who could get over the top and help on the vertical ball. All right? But he understands he's freed up because his number two is in the backfield. Okay? Now, with the backers, okay, we teach this as these are all, all three of our backers, okay, we are called match players. Okay? They are match players. So all of them are tied into a certain guy. My outside backers, which we call our dog and our Sam, for most people it's just your Will and your Sam, they are the match of number two. They match number two. My might is the match of three. Okay? So if I'm an outside backer, especially my dog, okay, I have two rules as far as alignment goes. Is my number two attached? If he is, then I'm in the box, okay? I'm in the box. If my two is out, if he's detached, I am an apex player, all right? I am an apex player. Now, one thing that we do differently is because in high school, and this is a change that I made um, when we got to the high school level, is because the hashes are wider, okay? So into that boundary, if we're into the short side, we will tell that outside backer he doesn't have to necessarily apex. He'll stay in what we call like a hip position. He'll stay in almost like a 50 on that outside shade of that lineman, okay, because he knows he doesn't have a far distance to go to get into his past responsibility, all right? But again, he's the match of two players. So there's three things that he's worried about number two doing. And this is after he gets his run pass read, right? Not talking about run as much right now, all right? If that number two is out, he matches it. Okay, he matches it. He's a match of two player. Okay, if that number two is out, and we're talking about out at five, he's going to match. Okay, and we understand that's why we use this free safety to rob. If he chases, we know a quarterback's are taught to read that guy. All right, our free safety's there to help. All right, if that number two is vertical, he's going to reroute it. All right, and we like that to happen at seven yards. All right, and I try to teach my outside backers, hey, knock them on the ground. That's our, our goal. All right, our goal is to knock that guy on the ground, okay? He's going to reroute him, and he's going to get his eyes outside off the reroute to see if anything is sitting out there in that flat, all right? If there's nothing in that flat, he'll circle back, but he knows, like we talked about already, once I reroute him, I'm giving him a safety now, okay? I'm giving him to my safety. All right, the only other thing we feel like number two can do to us, all right, is go in, okay? He's going in. Now, we teach that reroute on a vertical to happen at seven yards, okay? So we know if anything happens in front of us at five or below, which we call the no-cover zone, I'm just looking to pass it, all right? So if I'm up that outside backer, and I'm working, and I get past reading, I'm working the two, and I think he might be going vertical, and he cuts inside, I'm just going to let him go, give an in and in call to my next guy, and I'm going to sit and zone up, all right, and get eyes on that cue and see where I can help, okay? So what happens is a lot of times for us versus the smash concept, okay, let's just draw up smash, okay, that corner's going to fly out, we're going to end up with the safety over the top, and we're going to end up with that outside linebacker flying to the hitch. Okay? Flying to the hitch. Okay? So, again, 
that outside linebacker, which we call our dog, okay, he's doing the same thing that our Sam linebacker is doing on the other side, okay? But again, our Sam knows his two's in the backfield. So it's a little bit different for him, but he still understands I match two. If two goes out, I match you. If two happens to go across, I'm thinking about something coming back and I'm not chasing. If two's vertical, you may have to reroute him and pass him. All right. But those are the only three things that those guys need to know as far as their pass responsibility. Okay. Now, the mic is doing the same thing except he's tied in the three. Okay. So he's going to open where three is. So here's our three here. Okay. So we talked about the dog already. Let's say he went there, he flies, and, you know, draw seven on seven routes kind of right now. If he went vertical, he would run. Okay, he would run. I know we're not seeing a ton of that, but he would run. All right? Now, let's just have to say we get some type of natural exchange, okay, where this number one goes vertical, our corner's gone because he's playing his mod technique. If this two is under, and this back swings, these guys will work a natural exchange, all right? Because I'm the match of two, but I'm the match of the final two, okay? The final two. I'm the match of the final three, okay? So now we all know off of this natural exchange, he now has become three. He becomes two, all right? But again, our no cover zone rules stay intact, in so he's not going to fly to it. All right, he's going to kind of float down that line and mirror it. So if they dump it off, he can rally and make a play. Okay? Coach, you got a couple yeah. questions here. Yeah, go ahead, Coach. Uh, is your corner man turning, uh, then getting his eyes back, or are they zoning out? All right. So they're taught to do it both ways. Okay, they're, they're taught to do it both ways. Uh, and the reason we do that is because, you know, sometimes we get these guys – they come off and they shut it down kind of quick. It's, at, it's more at like three yards. So for us, we haven't been truly threatened vertically enough to where we started to transition. If that happens, they'll zone out. All right, they'll zone turn, they'll open to the quarterback. If we have already started our transition and he sits, all right, they're taught to get their eyes around as fast as they can and try and locate where number two is. But again, for them, they're just a help player if we happen to get any type of corner out by two. So they're, they're taught to do it both ways depending on what position their body's in. I want it to be a natural movement for them. And then uh, another question was, uh, <clears throat> once the ball snap, uh, what technique do your corners play? Or do they shuffle, slide, pedal? We, I, I, I call it motor technique. Well, I shouldn't say I call it because I didn't invent it. But, um, about a few, a few years back, I watched a guy who was the DB's guy at LSU. Um, and his name is Ron Cooper. Um, and he's got some stuff on YouTube. It's called Motor Technique. Um, so we are impressed. Um, but we're using more of a six-inch step as we come out. Um, and we're, we're keeping our eyes down. And we're essentially playing, the way I try to refer to my guys, is we're playing man-to-man -man basketball defense, trying to stay in front. And then if we get any type of release we get, we're utilizing the offhand to get a, a jam and try to widen that release or flatten that release. Um, so I can get, you know, I can talk more detail about the technique for the corners. Uh, but, yeah, that's that we're, we're going to be up there. We rep that all the time. And the one thing that I teach those corners because we're up there in press and I try to teach them this when I first get them is they need to understand how offenses think, right? So if a guy's showing press, again, that's why we take we, we do no free access, because we believe we can dictate to you what to run. If I show you press, I feel like nine times out of ten, I'm telling you to check fade, check some type of deep ball, right? I've taken out the hitch. I've taken out a lot of those concepts, all right, because of my alignment, all right? It also deters teams from throwing the bubble to number two, because now we're up pressed on that corner. They don't know if he's triggering. They don't know what he's going to do, because we do mix in some cover two and some other things. Um, but we feel like, so when I teach those guys, they're taught every time that I align and we're playing quarters coverage or what we call blue coverage, they're taught that they are defending the vertical every time that they align. 
their mentality is this receiver is trying to run a non route and then we react to everything else. We good there, G? Yeah, you're good, Coach. Uh, hold on. One came in. Uh, da -da. Are the uh, outside linebackers or safety the force on runs? The safeties are the force. Okay, so, and I know again, I, you know, I got film and things um, that we can we can we can talk about. Whoever has that question, all right. But a lot of times, depending on how we set our front, because it's all for us about how we set the three. All right, but depending on how we set our fronts, all right, and let's just say it was this, this instance, and this is where our, our shade and our five was. Um, this outside backer who's apexed, all right, he's taught, okay, he's taught, and we've wrecked it, and we have guys who are athletic enough that he's technically this B gap defender, okay? So if we were set like this, this is where our mic would be. Again, we're a one gap defense, okay? So he's taught that he's this B gap defender, but we do give him, all right, and especially older guys, guys that have been in the program a while, we give him the ability to send that if he feels like this too is wide, okay? So we try to help him with that, all right? So regardless of which gap he's responsible for, B or C in this instance, if he sees run, any type of low hat, all right, if he sees run, all right, he's coming to fit this B right now. Now, we feel like most teams are going to try to take this slot and do what? Go get that backer. They want to dig him out. Well, my free safety, who's 2 by 12, right, my free safety, who's 2 by 12, is reading the same thing. So we feel like when this run action comes, his first step, our safety's first step, what we call a read step, is actually downhill. All right, our first step is actually downhill. So we take a read step. If we see run, we continue to come down. All right, so let's say we got some type of gap scheme because I heard somebody asked earlier if we were a spill team. Okay, let's say we got some type of gap scheme where he was down, all right, and we knew that backer was coming to squeeze that gap. Well, our, our end is taught if he gets down, he's got to put his hands on. And he's got to squeeze because we feel like there's two ways to control a gap. It's with our bodies or with the offensive player body. So we're going to squeeze that B so tight with that rush in. Right? We're going to squeeze that guy down. Don't let him climb clean. So if anything comes back, that rush in is spilling it. All right? So if that football is coming to hit, it should have to bounce. All right? So we feel like now that's where our backer comes into play. All right? Now. As this guy goes and tries to get him, well, here now comes the safety to come and play. The one thing I don't see in high school that I saw in college was people pushing and cracking the safety. But even if they did, if they went to push crack the safety, then we would crack replace with the corner. So we feel like we've got every gap covered, and that's why we spill things. So to answer your questions, our safeties are our force and cutback putters. And, and so let just draw up one more thing off of that. Um, so if, if we're getting that pull, okay, they're blocking back. Or I'm sorry, I am doubling. And those that here's the rush. The other thing I got to mention is if we get that pull, that's what my mic is reading. All right, so you can see how everybody fits into the picture. Okay, if it's two backs, all right, let's say they're doing that, and he, the, he's getting the football. All right, he's fitting, he's forced, all right. He's going to see some type of low hat as well, right? So my strong safety saying the same thing. So when they see pull, they're running, right? They're running ball. So now that brings safety down. We tell him to get the linebacker depth and then scrape for cutback. And then once I know it's cut, the, the ball has committed, now I can get involved in pursuit. But our safeties are our force and our cutback players. I actually had a free safety last year. I had over 100 tackles for us last year. Got another question here, Coach. <clears throat> with uh, with wide alignment by the receivers, do you experience safeties uh, being lost on the run, or 
and you give them or, or give up a lot of yardage. Sorry, with wide alignment by the receivers? receivers. Yeah. So I, I, let me make sure I'm, I'm with you. I'm just doing – he's saying this, like, number two is real wide. I believe so. Okay. Right back in, but – um, I'm assuming that's what he's talking about. Let me know if, he, if he's saying something different. Okay. Um, but we feel like if that happens, because we get people who do that, right? They try to take that backer and remove him out the box by a line. Well, again, we're, we're playing numbers game, right? The reason we play our corners the way we do is because we're saying, y'all go play one-on-one, -on -one, and we're going to play nine-on-nine -nine everywhere else, right? That's kind of our mentality behind it. So if they start to get real wild with alignments, instead of apexing that, right, I've told, we told our guys, man, look, we're not going to play those games with those guys, right? We're not going to play alignment games. We're going to come in here and, and get ourselves into a normal alignment, you know, maybe four or five yards outside. But then we'll kind of cheat that safety down to maybe 10, okay? So now we're really playing two over two, we feel like, all right? So if they start to get real wild with alignments, what that does, what they've done, if they've taken away the ability for that guy to block a back. All right, so our numbers are still even, so we're still fine. Our safety is needed in the run game when he's taken away from us. Well, if he's all the way out here, he can't block him, we still got what we need to make the fit. Good. And that's what he meant, Coach. Okay, cool. Cool. We're good right now. We're good? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Uh, so, that, again, the, that's the basis of it. Those corners are playing mod technique. That's all they have to know. That's all they – that's their that's their responsibility. Not a lot to learn, but technically you got to be on top of your stuff, right, because you're defending that vertical route, the chance that guy's going to throw that nine ball every single time. Safety, same thing, right? My safeties usually are, are a really good football players, very smart kid, got to do a great job of reading things. Um, but, again, mod technique, if it's run – I'm either a force or cutback player. If it's pass, it's either my guy's vertical, pass that backer where I'm taking him, and if he's out or in, I'm getting my eyes in that direction to look to rob all right, and help where I can. All right, outside backer, same thing. If two reroute pass into your safety. If he's out right now at five, match it. All right. If he's in, look to pass, communicate that with your other backers. Mike Linebacker's doing the same thing. He just tied in the three. Okay, so – all those guys, those rules become the same. They become very simple for us, okay? So, um, things I'm talking about, again, just like I know people don't see a ton of these formations uh, anymore, but if we get a twins look, how we would align. So, our base rules are still in play. We have a tight end in the game, so we're making a right call, okay? But if we look at our passing strength, it would be a Liz call for us. All right, so we're going to set our field side. Here's our dog. All right, he's essentially our nickel for most guys. Here's our free safety, right? He's apex. He's two by ten. He's in his pressure line. That's because what we, what we already talked about. With the right call, that sets the three, okay? I told you already, we play with a nine, which most people don't do. All right, we got a nose, and here's our rush, all right? We still set our mic in that strong A. Here's where my sand would be set. Here's my strong safety, and here's my corner. Now, on this side, to the two receiver side, we're playing our normal deal. All right, nobody's doing anything different. Again, he can give him this B if he needs to, but he's taught up on how to fit this gap if we need to. Okay. Now, playing mod, playing mod, playing match or two. All right, but he's still a run player first. Now, the one thing that we will do on this back side, okay, is we will, on a nub side, when we get a nub side, if it's not trips away, and we get a nub side, we'll cloud check this. Okay? And I'm sure most of you guys know cloud is, you know, just cover two for us. Now, the one thing we will do with this, right, I'm, I'm not a fool. We don't need two guys on the perimeter, right? We have the ability to put this guy head up or inside shade. Now, for our defensive linemen, they're taught whenever I'm in a head up technique, inside gap. So he knows if he's in a six, what we call a six, he's head up on that tight end. He knows he's controlling the seat. 
okay? And then on this cloud side, here's my force and flat player, right? He's my force and flat, and here's my deep half player, all right? And he's also my secondary force on run, right? He's going to make everybody run, okay? On this back side, still playing our normal deal. Mike Linebacker, depending on where number three goes, is going to tell him what he's playing. If three goes to the quarter side, he's going to play his normal match of three rules. If three goes to the zone side, to the cover two, he's going to play his two drop rules. All right? Our rules for cover two. Okay, so he, it's not necessarily a match, but he's going to open in that direction to look for anything coming back to him. All right, so that's how we'll handle any single width formation, all right, or nub side formation where there's not uh, trips away, okay, where there's not trips away, okay? A couple of questions here, Coach. <clears throat> yep. um, who is, who is your, your force player to the twin side? That, that free safety. Okay. And then how do you handle, uh, say, a quick out slant RPO to the twin side? So, all right, let's just do that there. All right. Now, what was the first part of the question, G, real quick? Uh, how do you handle, say, a quick out slant RPO to the twin side? All right. So, one of the things about it is, is when we get RPO, what are we getting from the line of scrimmage, right? We're getting run read, okay? We're getting run read. So, again, depending on how our front is set, but if this is our weak side, okay, if this is our weak side, if I know I'm getting RPO to the twin side, one of the things that I can do is, again, give my N that B, right? And that allows me to hang a little bit because I'm now C. Right, I'm responsible for the A. The other answer we have to it, if we if we get caught, maybe they haven't shown it on film and they catch us, okay, and then he goes to fit that B gap. Well, at the same time, I'm getting some type of low hat because it's RPO. So what's my free safety doing? He's coming downhill to replace. So what happens is, is he goes slant, all right, that free safety who's gotten a run read, has already brought himself downhill anyway because that's what his key told him to do, all right? And in that flat route, because this is route is not plus five, that guy's going to start the zone off, but he's going to recognize I have no two threat vertically, all right? He's going to shut it down and be able to come and make the play on the flat route, okay? Now, if I'm getting a ton of that stuff, again, this is my base coverage, what we do with our quarter stuff. I'll be playing some type of cover two, type of, a trap type of deal where we, where we can take away flat window and that curl window where that slant's coming into. And then uh, there was another question here. I, you know, you may be getting into it later, but uh, curious to your trips, your trips adjustments. That's where I was getting ready to go. Yep, right figured. All right, cool. All right. Yep, we're good. All right, so I'm going to get into uh, a couple things because I'm going to start with just, you know, your, your base by one look. And again, we feel like this allows us, it's, it's simple, right? I, I'm not, I, I, I'm not, you know, re coming up with anything drastic, fellas. It's, it's easy for our guys to get lined up because they have base rules. They have two rules in alignment, right? They have three rules in pass, or they have, you know, it's very limited for them, right? They don't have a ton to learn. And once they learn it, we can get aligned to everything. Now, in our trip stuff, I'm going to start with the perimeter, all right? Our corner, okay, he has his one alignment. It never changes. The only time it'll change is if he gets a nub side where he's cloud checked, right? He's going to go up here and press one. And his press alignment on one. My free set, right, because this is a grip call for us. All right, that sets our passing strength. My free safety has his rule. Is his number two attached or deep? His two is detached. So he's going to be two by 12. It's, it's non-negotiable, right? It's non-negotiable. It's easy to see on film, okay? Now, if it's formation and boundary and all that kind of stuff, we'll tweak that a little bit, but we just want to use rules now, all right? My outside back to the trips, okay? Now, when we get a number three, we apex two and three, 
Okay, we apex two and three. Now, this is where things the into it. The one rule that's an exception for us in our front, okay, is when we get trips, when we get regular trips, uh, 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 open trips, not a tight end, okay, we actually set our three technique away. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why we do that. Okay, so we actually bump our backers. Obviously, you see where my, my outside guy is gone. He's bumped now, right? He's bumped out. So we bump our backers over and we bump our D line back to allow us to be able to maintain our one gap system, okay? So my mic now goes into a stack in that weak side end. So my three tech is away. My Sam himself into that A gap, but he's in a 20, right? He's, he's on that inside eye, 20 eye. He's on that inside eye of that guard. So again, it allows us to be gapped out. Boom, 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 all right, now. That might, we teach it, all right? He's technically responsible for B, all right? And my rush in is my edge point, okay? That keeps us gapped. Everywhere we want to go, we're gapped, okay? Now, Mike has the ability, if he feels like number three is wide, they're playing around with him. Even our offense does it to us in practice. When they want to throw RPO to three, they get wide, right? All right? He has the ability to give him that, a, that B gap. All right, it's in his arsenal. He knows it's in his toolbox. He can tell that in at any time. Hey, evil, evil, evil. Evil means you take the B gap. Okay, you take the so I can hang. Now, our corner on the backside is taking his normal alignment. Now, because all the receivers are bumped, the one thing we do with our strong safety is we bump him slightly because of our base trips alignment or trips adjustment. All right, we actually tell him he's in a B10. It's not fancy, fellas. It means being a B gap and be 10 yards off, okay? Because we still ask this guy to fit run away. All right, we ask this guy to do a lot. Again, last kid I had playing for me here ended up playing at South Carolina as a walk on, okay? So to the three receiver side, our, our outside backer, our nickel, our, what we call the dog, all right, our, our, our passing strength outside back, our free safety in our corner, are playing their normal rules on one and two. Match, mod, mod. Normal rules on one and two. It doesn't create, it doesn't change anything. Nobody's created anything else. Well, my Mike Linebacker, in other formations I've shown you, he was the match of three. Well, where's three? There he is. So three is vertical, he's going to reroute. If vertical's out, if three's out, he's going to look for an exchange. If there's no exchange, he's going to match. If three is in, all right, he understands that he may have to wall depending on what formations and game plan for that week, all right, because of what we do on the backside. Now, on the backside, we end up, we, we call it a yo-yo call, right? I'm sure most people do the same thing, okay? It tells the – and his backside back – they're, they're manned up. All right, so my strong safety will turn to that Sam in that backside corner and say, yo, 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 yo. He's telling them, hey, you're by Because the number one thing I teach my guys about trips is how are we controlling number three? How are we controlling three vertical? That is the most important part of it, right? So when we make that yo, yo call, if he gets high hat read, he knows he's cross can on three. Right, which is which is most guys' trips adjust. Okay, he's cross keying on three. Okay, so that is the basis of how we will adjust to trips formation. All right, again, we set our front away because it allows us to be gapped out. All right, but we also okay on this back side. So if we get a tight end trips. This is the time we won't set it away, right? Because, again, if we have a tight end, it overrules everything for us, okay? A tight end overrules everything. But his rules stay the same. His rules stay the same. His rules stay the same. It's three by one, so he goes into a B10. His rules stay the same, okay? Because it's trips, we bump slightly. But now we don't have to bump all as far because the three is attached. 
He's not removed. Okay, so we bump this mic to a 30. Okay, we bump this mic to a 30 and we bump this Sam, all right, to a 20. And now we still play our normal deal. On one and two, you're playing your, right? We are making that yo-yo call on the backside, which tells him he's locked, he's locked. I'm still matching three, all right? I just know now that three's a tight end, so I don't have as far to go if he's broke. Same thing with the strong safety, all right? B10 in line, okay? And I'm gonna get into one other thing with trips real quick. Um, so I know people are gonna ask, I feel like people are gonna ask, most people ask about, you know, how you handle that backside X if it's uh if they got a guy over there. Um a guy that you you feel like uh, you know you, you can't just can't can't cover. Okay. So again, simplicity for us, man. We're going to line the same. All right, again, it's true trips. So we actually set ours away. All right, we feel if we set the three to this side, we will almost be asking this mic to fit the end. So we feel like we set it away and just bump the backers. We can help him out. We ask you to get the three and play B yet instead of getting three, play A yet. All right, there's the same, all right, corners, and then our strong. All right, three. Now, the one thing I will say about this is if we got a guy back here, okay, we have a check. It's just cover six, right? There's not anything special that you guys don't know. But we call it danger. All right. That's our check for. It. All right. We call it danger. So if we call danger, that means this dude over here is dangerous and we don't want to play him one on one. Okay. So essentially, this is one of the few times where our corners alignments start to change. Okay. So they now are going to free safety and corner are going to get corners going to come to off. All right. On this back side, we'll show inside and move outside and play a cover two scheme, all right, with these three. All right, we're trying to play three over two here. All right, and then we're going to play basically true quarters, fellas, here, okay? He's still rerouting verticals. We want to take – all right, if we happen to get somebody sitting down and he's vertical, he's going to fly out to it, all right? So those that corner is now what we call – he's midpoint in one and two. He's going to play the vertical – the deepest of one and two. If both the vertical, squeeze the inside. He's midpoint in two and three. Play the deepest of two and three. If both the vertical, squeeze the inside. So we having to get four verticals out of this, right? When he's really stretching that backside, he's going to squeeze and he's going to lean on two. And we're going to say, go ahead and throw that vertical to one. Okay? But that's just one of the ways that we will adjust uh, – if we feel like that backside X or even that back uh, is too good for our linebacker to come. Got a couple of questions here, Coach. Uh, do you keep the same rules for your corner? So a soft press, if number one is off the line of scrimmage and number two or number three is on? Yes. Yep, we're going to keep our same rules. Because, again, it, it's all about that guy going plus five for him. Okay, so he's still going to be up there. He's going to crowd it. Like if the guy's on the line of scrimmage, I tell him to give him two yards. All right, so we're it does for us it gives us another step, um, but it still looks like press to, to you know the guy in the press box and all those sort of things. Um, oh, if we're still going to be up there, we might crowd the line a little bit more. If that guy's on the ball, we're going to be about a yard and a half to two yards off. And again, that mentality is is I'm defending the verb. Right, the entire time I'm up there, I, my mentality is I defend the vertical. Everything else is reaction to not to not defending the vertical. What happens after I don't get a vertical route? And the other one here, uh, how do you play uh, FIB trips single with trips and two by two tight end wing away from twins? All right, give me the first formation first. Uh, FIB trips. Uh, um, and, and we had a couple guys on the other day. We talked about this a little bit. Now, again, FIB trips for us, we don't see it a ton, okay? I will say that. But, you know, based on how we would look with our picture, this is how we would look, okay? Because our front is set away, right? We talked about that three. There's my end, my rush, and my nose, okay? So we feel like this is into the short side of the field, especially in high school. The hashes are wider than what they were when I was coaching in college. Okay, so the hashes are wider. 
So what are we getting when we get FIB trips? A lot of times I'm thinking screen game, right? Screen game, especially screen game the number one. Well, for us, we feel like we can take away screen by alignment. Okay, because we're up and we're already in your face, all right, we're making those angles. If they're trying to run some type of screen in the morning, we're making those angles hell on those uh, on those receivers. If they do run it, okay, say they run it, he's going to recognize I'm going to fit my gap. I'm going to stay outside of it. Once I see ball thrown as a mic, and I'm downhill, right? So I think – for us, that's we're, we feel like what we do with alignment, all right, takes away the ability to do what I think most people want to do when they get uh, trips into their bounds. And we'll uh, uh, sing, uh, single wing trips or single width trips. Okay. So like tight end backside, got it. Okay. So I know that number three is tight, fellas, but here we go. So – our base rules, corner, splitting two and three. Take my alignment off two. Here's my mic, because I got trips. I'm sorry, can't do it, all right? My mic's not going to be as wide, all right? He's going to be in about a 40, okay? Now, we're still setting everything away for us. So here's our nose, here's my rush, okay? My sandbacker, my strong safety, all right? Here's my end, and here's my corner. So the, the rules remain the same. Now, we can do different things. Again, this is our base. We're going to play our normal calls to the front side off of one and two. I'm making a yo-yo check, right, to my corner of Sam. Okay? Still tied into my match of three. Who's here, right? Right there for me. There's my three. And I'm still playing my match of two. And now I'm playing mod. And I'm playing mine. My rules don't change. Okay. So now I'm going to put him head up because of the nub, which means he's playing C. So we're gaps again, right? And we can fit everything and run. Here's my secondary fitter, all right, who can go over there. And then if it's pass and three is vertical, he's going to cross key it for us. There was one more formation, right? Yes, sir. Uh... Two by two, tight end wing away from the twins. Ah, good stuff. We saw this one the other day. All right, so again, set the three. Tight ends in the game, it overrules everything. Set the three. Tight end, we got it in. We've set a nine. Rush, boom, okay. Mike, strong 10. Sam, all right, and you're 50. Dog, twos detached, apex, corner. Press, free safety, two by 12, okay? We're, now, because it's two by two and it's not just a tight end, we won't bump that end down. We'll keep them. But we're still in our base stuff. We're cloud checking this. It's a dub side. It's not trips away. That's your rule. You're living it. Gap out. Or, right, or I can give him here and I go here. Right, depending on I get the shape, where how wide is two? How we gonna play it? Mod, mod, half player, right? Secondary force in the run game, force and flat because we got a nub side. So if we get that and that, we should be fine. That's how we're gonna play if we get that two by two tight end, tight end wing. Again, the rules, your rules are your rules. Yeah, that was it on, uh, on that question, Coach. Cool. Yeah, if anybody else has any questions, man, feel free to drop it in the, uh, drop it in the chat. Um, <clears throat> Coach, while they're, while they're doing that, do you want to just share uh, – one of the coaches earlier asked for your email. I said I'd ask you at the end to bring it back up, if you don't mind. I'm gonna pull that right up for you right now. Gotcha. And then let there's any other questions come in. Yep. Um, there you go. 
So for the coach that asked that before, uh, emails up, sell, Twitter, all that stuff. Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, yep. Uh, did you say you flip personnel? I'm sorry. Uh, the coach was asking if you said before if you flip if you've ever flipped personnel. As far as flipping my, my like, is he mean flipping the corners, the safeties? It, I'm just trying to make sure I understand the question so I can answer it correctly. Yeah, yeah, flipping the like corners and safeties. Yeah. So, um, and and I and I should have uh, let me go ahead and 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 stop this share. I hope everybody got that real quick. But um, yeah. So. The free safety and, you know, what most people call the nickel for us is our dog. They travel together. Okay. And then my strong safety and my Sam travel together. My corners, I change. I know people play with field and boundary corners. Um, I just feel like I want my guys to be tough enough. And like maybe that's just me being stubborn. Um, and maybe I made it for it. But I, I had a kid. It was 130 pounds played corner for us last year. It was at one through five games was leading us in tackles for loss off those nub sets, read and run, and just going and making a football play. Um, so I feel like we don't have to play field and boundary. But, yes, my free and my strong, uh, my free and my, my dog or my nickel for most people travel together. Um, and they go to the passing strength. And then my strong safety and my sandbacker go away from the passing strength at all times. And then to piggyback off that uh, question was asked if you, you'll also uh, ever flip the front. Yeah, so when we, um, again, we eventually we grow into our guys being able to play that three technique or that nose, right? And then sometimes we, we don't always shade the center. Let me make sure I say that too. We sometimes we'll go inside shade on that guard. I know a lot of four down guys do that. We do that as well. It's just a change up. Um, but for us, we initially, when we first start, you know, with everything, I'll have a guy who is the three technique. Um, we got a freshman kid this year, uh, well, he'll be a sophomore going into the next season, who's 6'4", 285 pounds, and offered by some SEC schools already. So he's going to be the three technique, right? But we think he's going to get the double teams. He's going to be that guy. Um, but we do have the ability for those guys to be able to play both um, but if we, if everything goes the way we want it, when we make that right, right call, that kid who's been repped as that three technique is going to be on the right side. Left call, he's going to be on the left side. There are some things we do with H backs where people are motioning H backs and trying to create an extra bubble to our shade five, where we'll slip front and bump the three down. So that guy who was playing those becomes the three technique. Um, but yeah. Most of the time, those guys are going. You're either to the call or you're away from the call. And that ties into what we do with some of our up front as well because we have some strong side stunts that we do. Big side stunts. So if a kid knows I play three times, I know these two or three stunts talk to me. Uh, <clears throat> what are uh, So there's, there's two that you may be able to just hit back to back. One, what is your uh, empty adjustment? And then even though we touched on it the other day, uh, how do you adjust or line up in quads against quads? Okay, now, well, I'm glad you did. They all kind of tie together, like you said. So, it's empty adjustment, right? We talked about our, our, our alignment rules already. So, um, my dog is going to split. My dog going to be at his 50. This Sam is going to be halfway. Now, I, it looks crazy because, you know, gaps and run fits, but we're, we're going to be gaming up front. And this. This is if we call our base coverage, hey, over blue. Guys, let's run over blue. And they come out and empty and we're not prepared, right? If we know repping throughout the week, I'm going to have some pressures and some things drawn up. But if we get caught, this is, hey, jump right into this right now. Let's survive it down, okay? So what ends up happening if we get empty is we're going to play to the three receiver side, that danger call that we talked about, right? And it's essentially just true chords, man, just true color four. We're off. Free safety's off. I'm more, I'm playing the deepest of one and two. I'm playing two and three. If everything's deep, I'm leaning on my inside. All right, I'm leaning on my inside. Now to this back side, depending on concepts that they like to the two receiver side, depending on concept, we'll play our normal coverage rules. All right, we can play our normal coverage rules where I'm matched to and I'm mod. 
All right, and I'm also playing mod. Or the other answer that we'll have is we'll play cover two to this back shot. So, like, if I feel like it's that guy and they keep trying to run the out cut and dick around with him, um, then I'm not going to play my base. I'm going to go ahead and roll and start doing some cover two to try to help that guy out and trap it you know, and catch him with that. Um, so that will be our base, how base ways that we'll handle that. We'll danger the three receiver side. So for us, that's just true quarters, right? We're going to be rerouting everything underneath. We're big on rerouting with backers. And then we can play cover two or our quarters concept to the two receiver side. So now if we get quads, okay, what we're going to do is tie everything together that we have, essentially. Okay, so we're going to danger it. Talk about, right, corner. I'm, my front dive see is going to be set away. I'm going to bump that sandbacker just a little bit because it's quads. All right, here's my free. But what we'll do with this is we're going to play our quarter scheme that we just talked about with one and two midpoint, two and three midpoint, right? But then we're going to mix in what we do on our base. Okay, our yo-yo call. So now we'll be playing our danger stuff over them. And then I'm cross-keying on him. So normally if that guy's here, He's tied into him. Well, now he's there. So he's going to open and become like that wall player for him. Okay? He's going to become that guy that's passing. And then on his back side, we're going to lock it up. And then remember, I'm running games up front. I'm running some type of twist game, um, something to take away quarterback quarterback runs. Uh, and, again, that's just base. That's if we, we call over blue and they got 20 personnel in the game and they come out like that, that's how we're going to end up. Uh, check in. Again, we try, we're trying to survive the down, man. When, when stuff like that happens, and now if we're game planning for it, um, and we got a bunch of time and we've been working for that, then we'll have some stuff ready, you know, ready to roll. Um, I've done some, some, some man robber stuff, you know, against that type of stuff, some all-out pressure stuff. But um, for us, again, in our base defense, we want to be able to align to everything. We feel like there's nothing you can show us that we can't align to, that my guys don't know their responsibilities in, in our base defense. We run cover two, we run, you know, get into some cover three, we blitz, we pressure. But in our base quarters coverage, the way we play it, the way we align, we feel like we can align to everything. My first year here, we uh, we played, you know, a double wing team um, who does some different things, a flex bone type offense. Um, and, and I tried to do a bunch of different stuff that wasn't who we were, five down, six down fronts, and doing all this kind of stuff. And we ended up in the next couple of years just playing our stuff. Line up, read your keys, do what the hell you've been coached to do. All right, and we ended up beating a ball club that we hadn't beaten in 10 years. So we feel like our guys know it. It helps them play fast. It's not a whole lot of thinking once they learn it. Uh, and then again, that's not everything. We have different fronts and different stunts that we piece together. I know if you, I know I can't give open B gaps all game, right? So I'm gonna twist and I'm gonna let that DN take that inside gap. We know we gonna see trap against our three techniques. So we got some inside movement stuff to try to combat getting trapped against that three technique. Um, so we have a menu, you know, we teach our menu and then we go into a game plan and say, hey, what on our menu that we have, say, what, what's gonna taste good for us on Friday night and we order. No, uh, we'll get a couple more here, Coach. <clears throat> uh, dog always aligns to the passing strength in this defense. Um, how do you handle the jump cut uh, when the back is aligned away from the three? Okay. Well, again, depending on what they try to do, right, and, and, and we got to understand the, the, the kids that we have, okay? The kids that we have, this dog kid, is probably one of the best athletes we have on our entire football team, okay? I mean, cleans about 300 pounds. He's only about 180 pound kid, 38 inch vertical. I mean, he he's a freakish athlete. He actually runs better than most of my DBs do, okay? He's a, he's a legit 4'5", four, 4'4", four, four kid. The kid on the other side, the sandbagger, is almost the same way, right? You wouldn't look at these guys as linebackers. They're 185, 190, 190. 95 pound kids who run well. Okay. So I'm sorry. But we're setting our dog to that passer strip and initially in a, in a look like this, all right, 
that's where we want him because we want him covered up in that passing game. We feel like he's the better guy for us. Okay. But they're because their jobs are so similar, right? They're both batch of two players. So there, there's no confusion for them. So they have experience in doing both things, right? Having to fit the B, being covered up by this. But if the back changes, so this guy, not like this guy's a better cover guy than he is, all right? This is just the kid that we wanted there, right? Because he's a little better athlete overall, all right? And again, what we're actually going to do coverage-wise is not a ton. Hey, I'm running with an outcut or I'm rerouting with no pass. So if they happen to flip this back, and this is one of the things we talked about with having those guys have the ability to do both, my Mike linebacker, if they flip that back and for some reason we decide that week, all right, there might be times where I say, hey, I don't care if they flip the back. Keep the three technique where it is because it doesn't change anything for us or what they're trying to do to us. There may be other teams who's flipping it for a reason, and I don't want to give it to them. So our Mike, if they flip the back, he's just going to make a slide call. He's just gonna, you're just going to hear the mic say, slide, slide, slide. And what will happen is he'll bump to a three. He'll bump out slightly to a six. He'll bump down to a shade, and he'll become the five. And we'll play football. And that mic, that A gap open now. So I'm going to bump myself over to play that A. All right? And then that dog also knows, oh, well, this B gap just opened up. I'm responsible for it now. Because that's the rules. So we'll get this last one uh, here, Coach. Um, your adjustments, your adjustments on double tight formations. Okay. So I'm gonna just draw a big, you know, two tight, two split. All right, because this is one we do see a little bit. All right. So again, depending on where the ball is, all of that is going to determine because it's a balanced formation, right? All of that is going to determine how we set our front or where we set our three technique. Okay, and where we set our passing strength. But let's just say for the sake of argument right now, we're going to make it a rip, all right, for the passing strength, and we're going to make it a right. Okay, well, we've already set the three because we told them right. All right, now my end is going to be in his nine. Initially, my nose is going to be in his, his, uh, his shade on the center, and my rush is still going to be a five. All right, we are not going to do I promise you, okay? We're going to stay in that five, okay? And the reason we do that, I'll explain in a second, right? But now, everybody's rules are the same. Boom, boom, corners are easy, right? Mike, I'm in a strong 10, okay? We said it's ripped, so we told the dog, he's in a 50, all right? The same linebacker is away, he knows he's in a 40-I, all right? Now, safeties, you already have your rules. Two is attached. Go one by nine. Free safety to the passing strength. Strong safety away. One by nine. Now, the one thing we do in this that's a little bit different is my mic will make a G call. Okay? It'll make a G call. And what that tells that nose is to now get into what most people call a G alignment and go inside shade on that go. Right? And my mic will bump to put himself just head up, all right? Because obviously they're balanced, so they got to check opportunity for run to this side as well, all right? So that's what we'll do there. If we feel like they're going to be heavy inside run with this stuff, same thing. I can make one call, a jam call, go ahead and put this guy up there, all right? So we have the ability. I can combo call it and say G, jam, and then put my coverage behind it. And that tells my nose to go to a G, that tells my strong side in to go to a six, okay? So there's multiple ways we can control it, but these guys, we feel like, all right, and most people, I know most people think the best way to stop the run is in a one high defense, it allows you to get eight in a box. Like, especially when we get these type of looks, we get nine in the box. We're playing one-on-one -on -one with you two guys, especially if you get something vertical, everybody else is playing nine on nine. So these guys are challenged a ton, right? I had two, I had two, two kids we have, you know, at the Citadel right now, all right, the first couple of years. So these guys are pretty good football players. They do one job, your job, get your butt down here in the run game if you can. And again, I, free safety for us this past season had over 100 tackles. He's coming, bringing his butt downhill and making plays.
Wow. Uh, I kind of segue to this question here. Uh, Coach asks, where do you place your, your best overall athlete, at free or at strong safety? Um, I would say my free is probably my – actually, again, I would say that dog, that outside backer or nickel for most people, he's probably our best overall athlete. And we're blessed we got great athletes, man. But that free safety has to be – those free safety and strong safety had to be great athletes, but they also had to be mental kids because they're the ones controlling the whole show with the rips and lids and the yo-yo calls and this and that. They're the ones who are controlling that whole show. Uh, so um, I would say the most – one of the things I think is not necessarily best athlete at free or strong, but are they t- – can they tackle and will they tackle? Because they're the guys, the way we spill everything, a lot of the times they're the guys that we call the free hitter. They can't account for you. So you're unblocked and your job is to make the tackle. They're the free hitter. They, they got to make those tackles. All right, the way we defend everything, if that kid's missing a bunch of tackles, we ain't going to be very good. So I showed you all earlier, the first year we gave up 30 points a game. Well, you know, that kid that was in that position um, wasn't the best player that we had at that time. Right, it took us some time to figure that out, but we weren't making that tackles at that position. We were giving up a lot of points. We make tackles at that position. We're not giving up a lot. Of points. There you go. Awesome, coach, man. I, that was great, man. I appreciate you you jumping on, man, answering a, a ton of questions. And there was a few coaches in here that um, I know were looking for your contact information. I actually sent you a, a DM. A coach was asking you to follow back because he had some questions for you cool. as well. So. Um, you know, and just like I know there's a couple, uh, one, one coach asked a question. Um, you could definitely reach out to him and, and watch this one back. Uh, some of the stuff that we covered, or excuse me, that coach covered earlier in the session. Um, as soon as it's done, I'll, I'll get this up on the drive and y'all be able to watch it. But um, definitely appreciate you coming through, man, and, and uh, sharing that wisdom. We've been, we've been working you these past yeah. week and a half, man. <laughs> this yeah. is the third one, so got it's got been fun. To do, man. I'd rather be talking ball than doing nothing. Yeah. You no, know, no, hey, especially right now where we ain't got much. We should be outside. I was, yeah. I was telling, I was t- telling coach before. It's, you know, we go on this hiatus right now, and the weather's never been nicer, and it's crazy. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's what I told people, man. It's gonna make this is gonna make it harder to stay in the house because it's getting nicer and nicer out. 